Hi, I'm Sandy. I'm going to share with you how to simplify identifying birds of prey and hawks. I bird mainly in Florida and the East Coast. So the field guide that works best for me is Peterson's Field Guide to Birds of Eastern and Central North America. In here, it's showing me that there's about 34 different species of hawks in the area that I'm birding in most often. So what I did was I took ownership of my book and I went through it and I marked what birds would be in my area. The way I did that was I read the chart over here on the side that tells me that this bird will be in my area in the uh, winter time. Okay, the chart is a little difficult for me to read in the field, especially when it's hot and cold, the wind's blowing and all the rest of that going on in the field. So I simplified that and I took the note and I put it over here and I made a blue polka dot. The blue tells me that this bird, which is a uh, sharp shinned hawk, is going to be in my area in the winter time. This one, the next one underneath of it, has a green dot. That's the Cooper's hawk. That one's in my area year round. The next one, I put an X on it because that's not even in my area. And then I have a green dot down here at this one. That one, that's a blue dot, okay? And that one's in the area in the winter time. So by doing that, it makes it easy when I'm out in the field to quickly glance. And right there is a key feature, knowing what time of the year the bird is there, very similar in their appearance, but knowing the season right there can simplify that identification for you. So that's the first step and by doing that I've taken the 34 birds that are in the book, reduced it down to 15 that I'm most likely to see in my Florida birding area. The next thing that I want to do is I want to practice the bird silhouettes and by learning to identify those bird silhouettes and that's their size and shape included with that, it's going to make birding so much easier. Birds are either going to be perched or they're going to be flying. And so what is demonstrated here is going down the columns, this is all their, the birds perched, what they look like perched, what they look like when they're in the full soar, and what they look like in the glide. And it's consistent all the way across the page. So just you get comfortable with that. And now you find that you've got five families of hawks here in Florida Identify. The Budios, there's only going to be four in the area to distinguish. Two occipiters, four falcons, I okay my falcons are down here at the bottom, two kites, which are here, and one harrier. And that's all that we're going to, once you get that far, now the birding starts to get real easy in identifying which particular species I'm looking at. The other thing people told me a long time was that eagles, excuse me just a second, eagles have rectangular wings so when they're soaring I wouldn't get confused and I had so much trouble understanding a rectangle wing but when I see the book it's like oh in comparison to what we were looking at before now we can identify that yeah that is a rectangular shaped wing. So rectangular shaped wing though it could be vultures it could be a caracara, or it could be an osprey. So there's some other nuances to pay attention to, but know the wing shape that you're looking at, okay? The other thing is habitat. Birds will tend to be in particular habitats where they find the food that they want. In particular, we can talk about a snail kite. They're not gonna get far at all from a lake that offers them apple snails. Or in the Kissimmee area, we have a native snail that's come in here and they can eat the younger ones and survive with that one. But uh, pay attention to the habitat that you're in. That's also gonna make your identifying of your birds easier. Again, the behavior. So now when I'm watching my birds on the wing and I'm watching them flying, sometimes the birds are gonna hold the wings in a V position. And there's one that just kind of rocks side to side like this, and that's gonna be a turkey vulture. He's just not quite as stable as the other one. Then 
the Harrier also has this type of a flying, gliding uh, position of his wings, but where he does his flying is totally different. He's over the marsh area, and he's not far off of the ground while he's doing that. So those are two features just to keep an, keep an eye on. Again, bird sounds. There's very distinguishing sounds that they make, and the red-tailed hawk has a really cool sound that you you will be amazed that you have heard it all this time and not known it. And what's really neat about social media and all the wonderful electronics that we have right now is you can go online to many sites and hear the bird sounds over and over or an iPhone and hear it over and over. So when you're in the field, you can say, ah, yes, I have heard that sound. Or if you're going out and you want to catch the mangrove cuckoo in his daily activities, you know what he sounds like before you go out there and when you hear it you know what bird that you found. And the other thing is you've got to know your bird topography. If you don't know where to look for the patagial bar then identifying a red-tailed hawk can be difficult at times. Then field marks. Field marks are the key and that's the real secret with your bird identification and with your hawks what I highly recommend you do is when you see your hawks, pay attention to the tail bars, the tail shape, the breast color, a rump patch, know where that rump patch is, and check out those legs. If somebody has red legs, you've got a really cool sighting on your hands. But I think that'll make it a lot easier for you to find your birds. Just demystify how to get through those hawks. You'll have a great time in the field, but you're going to keep yourself humble because all of these wonderful birds have young, and the young takes a couple years for their feathers to get into the adult plumage. So when you see one that doesn't look exactly right, hmm, it's probably one of the young uh, in the middle, in the, in the process of growing up. So we know how adolescents are, don't we? Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Happy birding out there, and leave me a comment if I've been of any help to you. Thank you.